Welcome to this video on hysteresis. We know that we can magnetise some materials. Magnetic materials can be magnetised when they're exposed to a magnet. But some materials retain their magnetism even when the magnetic field is removed. And this gives rise to this concept of hysteresis, which we're going to look at in this video. One simple experiment to demonstrate hysteresis can be done very easily by picking up some paper clips with a magnet, like shown in my little sketch here. And what we find is, even if we remove the magnet, we find that the paper clips will often remain magnetised, they'll remain stuck to one another, even when the magnet is taken away. So what's going on here? Well, we have this concept of hysteresis, this idea that materials can re retain some of their magnetism even though the magnetic field has been removed. One example where this might become significant in the field of electrical engineering is when we have a coil wrapped around an iron core. One of the other topics that we'll look at is the idea that we can use coils of wire to create magnetic fields. And often these coils will have an iron core. And as a result, just like the paper clips, the iron core will become magnetised. Now, hysteresis presents a little bit of a problem because we might stop the current in this coil, but the iron core remains magnetised. Or even worse, my coil might be connected to an AC power supply. And because it's AC, an alternating current, the direction of that current is continually changing and as a result the magnetic field produced by my coil is also going to be changing. The problem here is that the iron core has already been magnetized in one direction. So if the current changes direction, the magnetic field changes direction, the iron core has already been magnetized in the original direction and it's very difficult to change its direction because it kind of wants to remain magnetized just like my paper clips here. We'll look at this more later on in a different topic but in this video we're going to look at the principles of hysteresis and how we can represent it using a graph. The graph that I want to draw is what's called a BH graph. The x-axis you can see here is marked as H and H represents the magnetic field strength. The y-axis, the vertical axis, is marked as B, which represents magnetic flux density. Now an analogy here would be to think of H as our magnet in our original sketch and B as the paper clips. We can imagine that if we bring our magnet close to the paper clips, i.e. we increase H, then we're also going to increase B, the magnetic flux density, in the paper clips. And so what we'll see is something like this. We've increased the magnetic field strength by bringing a magnet close to our paper clips, and the paper clips have become magnetized. Their magnetic flux density has increased. We will reach a point where we've magnetized those paper clips as much as we possibly can. And so we reach this point um, where the graph levels off. And we call this the saturation point. So I'll mark that on here as saturation. And this means that the paper clips in our analogy have been magnetized as much as possible. Let's say that we remove our magnet. So H decreases back to zero. But what we saw in our analogy was that the paper clips retain some of their magnetism, some of their magnetic flux density. And so B is not going to return to zero. What we'll see is something like this. H has returned to zero, but B has still retained some of its magnetism. So initially, we went up in this direction, we increased H, and then we've decreased H again. And we reach this point here, which is called the retentivity 
in essence, the paper clips in this case have retained some of their magnetism. Let's say that I do want to get B back to zero. I want to get rid of all the magnetic flux density in my paper clips and return them to their original unmagnetized state. Well, with time, this will happen naturally, but I can force this to happen by bringing an opposite magnetic field strength into the picture. In our analogy, imagine that we start to bring the south pole of the magnet towards the paper clips rather than the north pole to try and cancel out that magnetism. Well, let's do that. And so now we find that the magnetic field strength is increasing in a negative direction. I'm bringing the south pole of the magnet, let's imagine, towards those paper clips. And what we find, sure enough, is that the magnetism, uh, that the magnetic flux density returns to zero. This point here is called the coercivity. It's the amount of magnetic field strength that's required to reduce the magnetic flux density back to zero. But the problem we'll find, as you can imagine with our paper clips, is that those paper clips are going to be attracted to the south pole if we bring it even closer. And what we find is we end up with the opposite picture in the negative section of our graph. Now my paper clips in this analogy have been attracted and magnetized by the south pole. And so we reach another saturation point in the negative quadrant here. Similarly, I could remove the south pole of the magnet, but again, those paper clips have retained some of their magnetism. And so we have a retentivity that is negative in this case. There's still some magnetic flux density remaining. And so likewise, we can reintroduce the north pole of the magnet to return B back to zero. But making that field strength even stronger, if we bring the north pole even closer, we saturate our paper clips again. And so what we end up with is a loop of sorts that goes round our diagram like so, from saturation to retentivity, coercivity, saturation in the opposite direction, negative re retentivity, another coercivity, and back to saturation again. And this is what we call a hysteresis loop. Or sometimes called a BH loop. When we think about the application of transformers with an AC power source, this hysteresis loop becomes very significant because it's a cause of great wasted energy in a transformer. Because the transformer is connected to an AC power supply, this means that it's being magnetized in one direction and then in the other direction very rapidly. This change will occur at 50 hertz if we're connected to a 50 hertz power supply. So 50 times a second, we'll end up going around this loop. Because it takes some energy to get rid of the retained magnetic flux density and return us to saturation in the opposite direction, this causes great inefficiency in the transformer. And so it's often important when selecting a material that's going to form the core of the coil that we find a material that has very low retentivity and very low coercivity because we don't want to have to fight against the retained magnetic flux density of the original saturation when we're moving to the negative direction. So I hope this video has been useful on introducing the idea of hysteresis and showing how we can represent hysteresis using a hysteresis loop or a BH loop.